Ma'am, shall we take a picture with you? So all of us have a lot of connections, both here and in India. So that's the way that we have continued our friendship and strengthened it. So this is the common legacy. And to me, what is special on the 75th anniversary is now we are putting into effect the vision statement that I signed with Prime Minister Modi. We have always dealt with our cultural affiliations, with our religious affiliations, fact that we are both democracies, fact that we have 
the British system of law. But what we have forgotten is that the trade and the economic relationship between Sri Lanka and India. I think it goes back even beyond the cultural stage. At the time of the Mohandajaros, it is said those ships sailed even into Sri Lanka. In South India, especially, and in Sri Lanka, the four kingdoms that Anuradhapura, Tanjau, Madurai, and Kanchipuram were either alliance with each other or at war with each other, depending how their economic interests were looked after. And to many of, the, of these three Indian kingdoms, one of the main ports to them was Trincomalee to go into the east. The fact that India used the our ports are well established. If you look at Munnesaram, the shrine near one port, Kirteswaram, the shrine near Mantai, Naguleswaram for those who came from Jaffna, what we call Jambukola Patuna, and finally Koneswaram for Trinkamani. The amount of coins that are there shows how much the Indian trade, the interaction between India and Sri Lanka. Into the villages they found in parts of the dry zone in Anuradhapura, coins issued by some of the South Indian trading organizations. So long before we signed this agreement on Sri Lanka rupee and the Indian rupee, they have been at it using common currency. So now it's a question of how do we go forward? How do we consolidate this? So connectivity is the main line. Connectivity, transport connectivity, power connectivity, how do we work together? How does Sri Lanka use this regional location, the strategic location for trade, so that South India benefits from it. So we are looking at now the development again of Trincomalee as a harbour, as Southeast Asia and the Bay of Bengal develop, and the Bay of Bengal itself becomes, uh, the strategic value improves, the use of Colombo, how we will have connectivity, and how the excess renewable power in Sri Lanka, partly, can be used in South India. The tourism, the tourists who come from India to Sri Lanka, and also Sri Lankans who keep going to India. Remember, it's two ways. A fail in Alad number goes to Tirupati, and now to Ayodhya, and to Guru Ayu. Much as they will come down here. So it, it is for us, as the Indian Ocean develops, as our country is developed, that we work together. We move towards economic integration. There's no other way don't take the way of UK, which being integrated to Europe, decided they go out. And they are still looking for a role, including a free trade pact with India. If it will come through or not, I don't know. But nevertheless, we, we must realize the opportunities we have, how we can work together with India and go ahead. There should not be any differences. We should be able to move around fairly, easily. It might be easy for a person in Bangalore it's easier for him to jump into a plane, come here for a holiday than to go to Rajasthan. There's two hours. We have only one hour. Look at the advantage. So in, in uh, industry, in all this, the supply chains that can be established. For Indian Ocean is now developing. You will find India, you will find Indonesia, you will find Iran, you will find Saudi Arabia and others, the Gulf, that will develop fast. So this is now becoming a center. It will be for the next 50, 60 years and as Africa develops. So what we have to do now, we let's keep building up on our other connections, the sports, the culture, there is no difference at all here. But the economic and the trade relations must go ahead. The political relations have been there. We are next to each other. We have to live with each other. But it's the trade relations that can benefit both India and us. So I must thank the India Society, Sri Lanka, for this occasion where we have got together and for the efforts they made last year to ensure that we, are, we have a closer integration and let the vision statement now be implemented in full. Thank you. Friends, it is hard to miss that overall our relations today are better than ever before in our history. It is underpinned by unprecedented mutual trust and goodwill, the positive direction that our relations have acquired in the past year following the adoption of the vision document by our leaders 
at this summit meeting in July 2023 gives us the confidence that even better days are ahead. This new confidence is further buttressed by India's strong economic performance in recent years and strong signs of economic recovery, growth and reform that we see manifesting in Sri Lanka. There are also important reasons, other important reasons for this confidence. Our respective urge to transform our nations into a developed one by mid-century, our newfound determination to finally deliver and translate our vast potential into performance, our faith in democratic polity and good governance, and most important, the aspirations of a large, youthful population, which gives us the much-needed drive and energy to forge ahead. Indeed, we seem poised to be on the right side of history, expecting finally to achieve our ambition and aspirations of scaling great heights together.